Hello, everyone. Welcome to Snap Take. I'm Glazer of Snap Judgments, the official podcast of Marvel Snap Zone. And today, we've got two amazing decks for you. We've got a brand new take on the High Evolutionary, a Lockdrawless take that is competitive at the very top of the meta. We also have a really great Jean Grey lane control ongoing deck that uses cards that you just don't even consider for both of these decks will be coming right up. But first, if you could do us the favor, we'd appreciate a subscription. We'd appreciate a like, a comment. Any of those that you can do would really help us out. We're trying to grow the channel, doing our best to provide you really high quality Marvel Snap content. And to do so, we give you two decks every single weekday that can help you get infinite, help you get infinite tickets, help you have fun, help you achieve your goals as it comes to Marvel Snap. In addition, we are the home of the single biggest Marvel Snap giveaway of season passes every single month. That will be coming up in the next couple of weeks, so make sure you're subbed so you don't miss out on that. One more thing I'd like to bring your attention to. Den is an absolute legend in the card gaming community, and he's a writer for Marvel Snap Zone. Spoiler, so am I. Den is offering free group coaching for Marvel Snap Premium Members. That is a $10 a month subscription service. Now, you can expect in the session a um, part where we understand the changes to the meta, what's going on in the uh, format. We spotlight a deck. It'll be a look at a deck and like um, what you should know about it, what you need to know, and then a let's play together session. If you think that's interesting, please check it out over in uh, the description. I'm going to have the link to this very article that's got all the details. And in addition to that in the description, some of you aren't going to be able to afford this giveaway. So in addition to the season pass, if you're interested, I need you to leave a comment here. We're doing this straight up only through the YouTube, not on the Twitter. I'm not even announcing it on the Twitter. Straight up through the YouTube. Leave a comment that you'd be interested in a Marvel Snap Premium, premium subscription, and I will get a giveaway set up for a couple months of that subscription so you can see how you like it and you can get some coaching from Den to help you get better at this game. Also, don't forget to like and sub here or you're not going to get any of that stuff. So, cool. All right, let's move on to today's decks. We are going over to Evocula. This is from Twitch Irem, Twitch Aram, not exactly sure how to pronounce it. He also goes by Streamer Johnson. I'm going to throw his Twitter in the description to this video. He is a uh, Southeast Asian player. I'm not sure if he's actually Korean, but I know he won a Korean tournament with two different decks, this being one. Anytime he saw his opponent playing Invisible Woman, playing a deck that worked in a similar fashion, this is what he played. And this deck is an absolute thing of beauty. I spent literal months... Um, dealing with the best deck builders in the game, trying to figure out how to work a Sarah Dracula um, Colleen Wing back into Sarah decks, because there is this point early on in the game's history where fundamentally what um, what the best thing to do was, or what one of the best things to do were, as I started the game, but before I got through Series 3, where one of the best things to do was to go Dracula on 4, Sarah on 5, and then as you played all the twos on six, Colleen was one getting rid of the cheapest thing in your hand and allowing you to um, basically turn Dracula into a four, usually nine, because the card that was run at the time was Amara. This deck has that exact strategy, and it is so freaking cool. It's absolutely bonkers uh, insane. So basically, your strategy is to have an early game with cards like Invisible Woman or Shocker. I think Shocker is really, really good here if you're getting a discount on something good. Um, early in the game, hide cards like um, Colleen and Hitmonkey, get Dracula down on four, get Sarah down on five. At that point, you sort of have a miracle turn where you play Wasp, Hitmonkey, Colleen, Silk. You drop all of these cards just trying to go as wide as you can with power. Colleen discards the cheapest thing from your hand, likely either Shang-Chi or Evolutionary. If you need to Shang, you need to Shang. You're not going to be sad at doing that and having an extra thing in hand. Colleen gets rid of cards. Dracula discards Hulk or Infinite. You win the game with a Shang-Chi proof, whatever Hulk becomes, or 420 Dracula. So 416 to 420 style card. It's absolutely crazy cool and crazy powerful what this deck does. Um, your Sarah turn at the end of the game, if you're dropping Colleen Silk, uh, let's say you're dropping Colleen Silk Hit Monkey, that's three. And you're dropping Shang for three and Wasp. That's five cards. 
That is a 10 power hit monkey. Negative one from Wasp Shang deleting a card. Nine power from Colleen and Silk. This deck goes off. This is so cool. This may be the future of evolutionary. It sort of combines um, a Lockjaw is Lockjaw evolutionary with the classic Sarah Miracle. I strongly urge you to check this deck out. It's brand new. You're getting it here first. No one else has done a video on this yet. Next up, we have our friend Keen Koalas. Uh, I, I'm calling this Keen Gene Orcaland, and if you get the pun in the comments, do let me know. This is from our friend Keen Koala. He hits infinite every single season with Quake. Um, he loves lane control and lane manipulation. This deck does lane control and lane manipulation, but with Gene Gray, Mr. Fantastic, and Claw, instead of using uh, Storm, uh, Captain Marvel, and Quake. Keen Koala's gene deck is fundamentally built around filling the gene lane with things that get stronger when you play cards there. How often are you really going to be able to play Punisher? This was my deck of the day yesterday if you want like a more turn-by-turn -turn detailed guide, but you get basically Ant-Man or Mojo in a lane along with something like Warpath or Punisher. You make that lane nice and tall so your opponent doesn't really compete with gene in it, but they have no choice but to like at least fill it. Um... Toward the end, you get either Mr. Fantastic or Claw into a second lane. And then if you drop Orca, you'll have like 22 to 24 power in that Orca lane on top of a really powerful other lane with Jean Grey. And that lane has to be either left or center, ideally center for Mr. Fantastic or left for Claw. This deck also does a phenomenal job because of the Claw and Mr. Fantastic of stealing cubes for unreachable locations. Claw is just bigger than dr doom claw is just bigger than jeff and those are the two main ways that people get into those locations you get in bigger there you steal those cubes you get nice and tall with your like four nine your three three your two eight mojo in that middle lane assuming it's the middle lane could be the left lane whatever and then you also still have the ability to pump that lane even further even further with spectrum or drop 16 more power with orca whatever the situation calls for this deck is really cool, again, and really, really powerful. I urge you to check it out. This is not a tier one deck. This is like a little more fun tier. Um, if bounce goes away, though, I can see a deck like this being actually surprisingly good. And the reason I can see it being surprisingly good is because this is trying to win games in the low 20s of power. Um, sometimes 16 with Orca, but generally speaking, around the low 20s of power in a lane. And Bounce just gets bigger than that, right? Like, Bounce just starts throwing Kitty on Angela over and over again. It gets too big, and then, like, you can't really stop that game. So, that's obviously not a good matchup for you, right? If Bounce goes away, though, this does a really good job of frustrating where your opponents play cards with Gene, and then going above them in that lane. Effective way. Try the deck out. I hope it's fun. I hope it wins you some games. Let me know what you think. But the real deck of the day is this Meadow um, Evolutionary Dracula deck that you just have to try out. This deck is sick. You'll see a lot of things Surfer in the meta. This goes taller than Surfer, and it's not vulnerable in the way many uh, decks are to like the Shadow King and Killmonger nonsense. This deck, um, it's not really vulnerable to... Um, the Shang-Chi's opponents are running. It'll occasionally get beat by, like, Destroy that goes real, real tall, but you still have your own Shang-Chi, your own Invisible Woman for that kind of match. Is this beating Bounce? Eh, here and there, right? Like, Bounce is the best deck in the game. It's a really tough matchup. I only expect Bounce to last at this crazy level for one more day. I think this deck is marvelously well-positioned. This might be the best evolutionary deck, and I'm happy to bring it to you. If you are excited by these decks, you're liking this content, please hit that like and sub button buttons, and we appreciate all of your support. Thanks so much for watching. Peace.